Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thanks for joining us on this broadcast. As I most always do, let's quickly recap last week's teaching messages. The theme that was that of spheres or areas of our life where we are called in Scripture to walk and grow in Christ. On Monday, we talked about the sphere of exaltation, reminding ourselves that while the spiritual highs are wonderful, they are meant to be lived out in the valleys. Tuesday's sphere was humility or humiliation. While, while not nearly as exciting, it is every bit as necessary for our walk to encompass all that God has for us. And then on Thursday, we dealt with the sphere of ministration or service, which is the result of our walk and growth in Christ. As always, we had great episodes on Wednesday and Friday with co-hosts Adia Wooster and David Walls, respectively. And if you missed any of those or any others, you can find all of those and many more at loveandlordship.com. Love, A-N-D, loveandlordship.com. You'll find videos of it. You'll find podcasts. You'll find other articles you can read. And in every case, you can share that with others um, if you find that it's been helpful to you in your walk or challenged you or encouraged you, it can do the same for others. So appreciate you sharing that. And thanks for those who have, as well as those who have contacted us with questions or comments, agreements or disagreements. You can do that at love and lordship, A-N-D in the middle again, love and lordship at gmail.com. That's love and lordship at gmail.com. This week, if we're willing we're going to tackle some areas that, again, may be a bit uncomfortable, but are very helpful and needed in our discipleship walk. The first in today's message is the exclusiveness of Christ in his calling us to himself. Tomorrow, we'll deal with how we can and should respond to God's silence. You ever been there? <laughs> and then on Thursday, we'll look at how God uses difficulty and struggles in our lives to grow us stronger and make us more effective and useful in his kingdom. So today's episode is one that is actually pretty appealing, if not very appealing, if we're willing to allow ourselves to follow through in obedience. I mentioned this in our book, The Authority of Love, Second Edition, as well as on this broadcast, the Jewish people in context that the scriptures were written in which the scriptures were written, I should say, would have clearly understood that when Christ or the Holy Spirit through the prophets and the apostles and other Bible writers, uh, when they gave clear directions, that they would have been recognized and acted upon as commands, not as suggestions or maybe you should try this, as we so often see them taught and lived out in our day and time. This may be as evident in today's text and the unpacking of it, as even when the command is seemingly pleasant, our human nature, our flesh, tends to balk. Well, why is that? Well, we're going to find out more in a moment. The title and command of today's Devo comes from a very familiar text, and Chambers rightly calls us on it. Come to me. Now, if you're following along in the devotional booklet or online at myutmost.org, we're on October the 8th. Today's title, Come to Me, from the modern classic version of this devotional, is likely immediately recognizable to you as a listener, or if you're sharing that, as well as the Bible verse that it comes from. It is so often used in sermons, messages, and teachings with the implication and understanding that, of course, we'll come to him when times get tough, when the burdens get heavy. However, the title given in the classic version may explain why, as with many commands in Scripture, that we don't readily follow through. I've already mentioned that our culture very seldom, if ever, sees New Testament or Scripture or any Scripture, for that matter, as commands, making it much easier for us to rationalize and justify our own choices as to whether we will follow through or not. Another stumbling block when it comes to obedience is our independent natures rooted in our flesh that cause us to often push back when we're told to do anything. We don't take too kindly to authority of any kind if we're really honest. This brings me back to the classic version title and another reason why we tend to filter these things through our own thinking and definitions rather than choosing to be obedient to the clear commands of Christ and of God in Scripture. 
The classic title is The Exclusiveness of Christ. Yeah, surely there are more options, more choices, and more flexibility in following Christ than the exclusive words that he says, except that there aren't. Chambers peels back the layers of human nature and selfish flesh, even in this encouraging and relief-giving command. Come to me. That's where we get the modern classic uh, title, right? Come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. See what I mean? Isn't that a wonderful and encouraging, a relieving and restful command? See what I'm getting at? We read that and we don't think of it as a command. But before we jump into Chambers' commentary, I have to say that in my own life and over the past 30 plus years of mentoring, counseling, teaching, and discipling others, what you're going to hear is 100% correct. I can't tell you how many times that I've encouraged and counseled folks in distress at all levels that the greatest thing they can do is pray work what they can control, and spend time in God's Word. In, in short, to trust Him, or in a phrase, come to me. And yet, without fail, in those moments, every single person, including myself, claiming they believe in Christ, decides, decides to spend much or most of their time working and worrying, and then they wonder why they couldn't sleep, eat, or get any rest why they're having trouble with their headaches or stomach or whatever it may be. As with all of God's commands, Christ obviously included in that, they are for our good. But we so often, if not always, try to do it on our own rather than coming to Him, going to Him. It's amazing, again, in my own life as well as every other person who has ultimately been willing to do so, how much more peaceful and restful it is when I or they decided to come to him. Chambers hits us right between our flesh-driven eyes. Isn't it humiliating to be told what we must do, that we must come to Jesus? You see the command there? Chambers captures it, must, that we so easily and readily ignore or leave out. As long as we have even the tiniest bit of spiritual rebellion inside of us, we long for God to ask us to do something grand and important. Instead, he tells us to do something infinitely simple. Just come. Think of all the things you won't come to the Lord about. Seriously, give that some thought. If you want to know how spiritually real you are, test yourself with these words. Come to me. In every degree to which you are not real in faith, you will argue rather than come. You will try and get the job done. You will go through sorrow and frustration and anger and bitterness rather than come. You will do anything rather than present yourself just as you are to your Lord. Come to me. When you hear these words, you know that a change must happen inside you before you will come. And there's the rub again, right? Am I willing to allow Christ to change me die to self, humble myself, and come. The Holy Spirit will show you what you have to do. He will show you that you must take an ax to the thing that is preventing you from getting through to the Lord. Worry, anxiety, insecurity, fear, greed, lust, and on and on. You will never get any further until you do. The Holy Spirit will locate the one unmovable thing in you, but He won't budge it unless you let Him. How often have you come to God with your request and had the feeling that you'd achieved your goal only to come away with nothing? I've found that this is nearly always tied to my own thinking and desires instead of being willing to listen and accept His. Come to Him. And yet all the time, God has stood with outstretched arms, not only to take you, but so that you will take Him. Think of the invincible unconquerable, untiring patience of Jesus as he says, come to me. Here's some food for thought as we wrap this up. The imagery of Matthew 11, 28 through 30 is that of getting in the yoke with Christ. That's what he follows through with after he says, come to me. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. The contextual meaning was that of a rabbi asking his disciples to be willing to fully accept his teaching, his truth, his commands. In other words, in order to follow through fully with his com this command, come to me, given by Jesus, we have to be willing to lay down our own way of thinking, our stubborn independence and rebellion, and recognize that he is the one and only true and exclusive rabbi. And that his words, his teaching, his truth are worth following and living out. The yoke is easy. The burden is light. In this way alone can we find the peace and rest that he promises and that we are looking for. Come to me. Love in action. Spend some time with God and his word and prayer and listening every day. You can begin with the, the, the few texts in this uh, episode or start with the book of John, the Gospel of John in the New Testament, or Psalms or Proverbs in the Old Testament. Again, those are just suggestions, but I promise you, if you begin doing it and it just, just spend a little time every day keeping that commitment, watch what happens. Number two, watch even more when you begin to ask this. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Number three, are you following Christ on your own terms because you never really come to him? What's keeping you from following through on this command and receiving his rest? Number four, what would it look like for you to lay down your stubborn independence, I know I've had to do it, and get in the yoke, the teaching, the truth of Christ in obedience to his commands? Tomorrow's message deals with how we can respond to God's silence. Don't miss it and invite your family, friends, loved ones, even your enemies to join us as well as we all need to hear this full gospel message, not just that Jesus saved you, but what it looks like to live out that gospel truth. What does it look like to be sanctified and walk as his disciple? That's the full gospel. If you want more, as I mentioned early in the, in the broadcast, you can find that at our website, Love and Lordship. It's A and D in the middle, loveandlordship.com. You'll find our book there. There's an icon of the, of the book cover there in the middle of the homepage. Click on that. You'll find a little video explaining about the book and links where you can find and buy the uh, Kindle version or the paperback version. And if you have any trouble with that, would like one, contact me. I'll get you a copy. I'll get it to you for a donation of zero on up. That's what I tell every, every person in every place I speak, for a donation of zero on up. You can contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com, loveandlordship at gmail.com. Now, if you see that we are uh, a ministry that is of the kingdom and for his glory, and God may be encouraging you to partner with us, please pray. Uh, and if he is encouraging you to do more, you can give. There's a, a, a tab near the right-hand upper corner, a Give tab. If you do that, it'll take a minute or two, and all donations are fully tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Thank you for those who have done that and continue to do that. You can do it very quickly, one time or ongoing, in just a minute or so. So thank you for that. You can also give uh, through mobile, cash app, at Love and Lordship, cash app, dollar sign, Love and Lordship. Check that out, or you can give by mail. I'll give you some more on that another time. Thank you for joining us. Thanks always for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in the love and lordship of Christ. And if we're not the ministry he's calling you to give to, keep praying until he shows you. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.